Hey y'all, TRG here, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be going over a multi-day severe weather outbreak that is likely over about the next four days. This will include the potential for multiple long-tracked strong to intense tornadoes, as well as the possibility for up to 80 mile per hour winds in portions of the U.S. Let's go right on into today's video. I'm going to attempt to make this short, so that way I could just give you all the best information that we have within a short amount of time. Here's the SPC outlook for today. Right now, they have a very large enhanced risk level 3 out of 5 centered over the OKC Metro up through Wichita, Topeka, and Kansas City. We'll be live probably about 3, 3.30 Eastern time covering this risk for severe weather. There's the opportunity for multiple strong, potentially a long track tornado or two, specifically over the OKC corridor. Damaging winds also possible up to about 80, 85 miles per hour around the Kansas City Metro, as well as large hail up to about two and a half, three inch in diameter, all possible for today. I do believe we could see a moderate risk for severe weather issued at the Storm Prediction Center, either at the 12 30 p.m eastern update which is about an hour from the time of this recording or at the 4 p.m eastern update they will most likely expand that enhanced risk off to the south southwest and we could see a moderate risk introduction probably over and near if not a little bit more to the west of the okc metro area i think it will be a relatively small moderate risk if they do add it because there's a small corridor along the dry line where we have increased confidence in supercells firing then we go into tomorrow's risk for severe weather we have a huge enhanced risk level 3 out of 5 over most of Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, Arkansas, Missouri, all inside of that enhanced risk level 3 out of 5 for tomorrow. I do believe we will see a quite large moderate risk for severe weather, probably all the way down from the Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana border all the way back up into the Midwestern U.S. And this actually does have the opportunity to be a high risk for severe weather if we can see enough prefrontals fire. Right now, the confidence in prefrontals is extremely low, so we can't really say much about a high risk, but I do think a moderate will eventually be issued for tomorrow's risk for severe weather, probably for tornadoes. But at the moment, they have a huge 10 significant chance for long track strong to intense tornadoes, a very large aerial area for widespread 80 to 85 mile per hour winds, and also a very large area here for extremely large hail up to about two and a half to three inch in diameter for tomorrow. Day three, they also have a very large slight risk for severe weather. I think this may be upgraded to an enhanced risk probably for hail out in the Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana region, somewhere out in that area. I think we could see an enhanced risk for hail. So hail will be the biggest issue, but a couple damaging wind gusts as well as some large hail will be possible here as well. Going into the day four risk, this is for April 4th now. They have another slight risk for severe weather. This is a little further out, so exactly how high in this may be is very uncertain. Uh, looks like a couple tornadoes, some large hail damaging wind gusts. And guess what? It doesn't stop there. April 5th, another slight risk for severe weather from the SBC outlined there from Kentucky, Tennessee, down through Texas. So multiple severe weather outbreaks are likely over the coming days with today and tomorrow probably going to end up being tornado outbreaks. Before we continue on with the rest of today's video, I ask that you guys hit that subscribe button with the notification bell set to all, like this video, and share this video with your family, friends, and social media, and let's go right back on into today's video. Alright, let's just dive into this a little bit more in depth here. So, going into tonight, we're going to start seeing a shortwave develop over the OKC area, and also pointing to the north. The reason why I specifically am pointing out OKC in this video is because, look at this, if we look at our moisture, there is is an area a just-in-time moisture here over southern Kansas and specifically over the OKC metro region and that dry line is right to the west of the OKC area so we're probably going to end up with initiation along that dry line and then as storms grow upscale probably by the time they get to the OKC metro we're most likely going to end up with a few strong to intense tornadoes today possibly one or two long tracked uh, could be a very very high end risk day for today like I said I think they'll end up adding that mod moderate risk uh, confidence overnight has skyrocketed in supercells, uh, most likely firing over the OKC Metro or to the west, wherever that dry line may set up. Uh, and then by the time we get to about the 5, 6 p.m. Eastern time frame, those storms will explode along the dry line. Uh, and then from 8 to 10 p.m., you've got that intense, uh, potentially long-tracked tornado threat over the OKC metro area. Then going throughout the rest of today, going back to your 500 millibar wind speeds here, 
now going into tomorrow you can see that's when we're going to start seeing our very strong negatively tilted trough over the central united states continue to eject off to the northeastward there is definitely some uncertainty with exactly how many prefrontals or how significant this threat for wednesday may be but you could see this entire area is in the southern exit region of the trough so forcing is a slight question mark here uh, yesterday there was a lot of question marks the setup didn't look that good yesterday but then today and overnight last night it started up trending again so i'm a little unsure on how significant this tornado threat may be but like i said if confidence increases in prefrontals forming somewhere in this area we could easily see a moderate risk and maybe possibly even a high risk eventually issued if confidence in prefrontals uh, does go ahead and increase here for tomorrow. Going into Thursday, we'll continue that very large area of just troughing over the western United States. That's going to just bring a very large area of widespread damaging winds, widespread small to large hail. Like I said, probably going to focus over the Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas corridor. Also, some tornadoes going to be possible there as well. Then pulling that even more forward here into Friday, whenever that trough does fully exit... That is when we will have the highest tornado threat. So right now, it looks like the NAM is thinking Friday could be a decently high-end tornado threat. So Friday or Saturday is going to end up being another notable threat for tornadoes. I don't know which one uh, is going to end up being the highest threat, but either Friday, Saturday, this week, April 4th or April 5th, uh, is going to end up being another setup for a potential tornado outbreak somewhere in the southern United States as that trough traverses in the right exit region and over portions of the central and south central United States. So definitely an extremely active weather pattern setting up here for this week, the first week of April. So after April 5th, that trough continues to traverse. You can see the GFS thinks April 5th could be a tornado outbreak. So we're going to keep an eye on that. Like I said, the 4th or the 5th is going to end up being another good tornado setup. April 6th, that moves off to the east. I haven't looked at this just yet. Yeah, it doesn't look like much widespread severe weather there on on April 6th, maybe just the per usual mid-Atlantic squall line and southeastern United States squall line there. And then April 7th, that may be a severe weather day, but it's probably going to be the day where we start to get inactive here across the U.S. We're going to see a very weak high pressure build in, and that should keep things on the calmer side of things. Now, we'll still see some uh, apparently snow in the northeastern U.S. and probably the isolated severe threat in the southern U.S., but I don't think we'll see any major severe events from April 7th, probably all the way till about April 14th or so. Like I said, I haven't really looked at this, but yeah, you could see maybe around the time frame of April 14th or 15th, we'll see another trough enter the United States that might cause a severe threat. Uh, however, that's very far out. Just going off of the pattern wise here, uh, just looking at the overall pattern, I think we could end up with more severe threats going towards the dead middle and of course the latter half of April. The latter half of April should be extremely active for severe weather. So after this about week of severe weather all the way up till April 6th or April 7th, after that we'll end up with a good solid, hopefully week, a week break without much severe weather to talk about. And then like I said, towards the middle and especially latter half of April, we'll kick back up with severe weather in the U.S. All right, let's dive a little bit more in depth here with today severe weather threat so really not expecting much all the way up until 4 p.m uh, we're going to go live a little bit earlier probably about 3 3 30 p.m eastern time to talk about this setup on live stream here uh, but about 4, 4.30, maybe 5 Eastern, we should start to see some signs of uh, a CU filled or initiation beginning in or to the west of the OKC Metro for today. You'll see the HRRR does initiate a thunderstorm here at 5 p.m. And then 6 p.m. that rapidly grows upscale. 7 p.m. we're entering that peak activity, peak ingredients over Oklahoma, southern Kansas. Long track, strong to intense tornadoes possible. And then look at this at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Time, the HRRR takes a, uh, a unfortunately classic supercell directly over the OKC metro area.
area. Hopefully that does not end up happening, but it is a possibility for today that we could see a supercell track very, very close to the OKC metro area for today, potentially producing a strong, intense, long track tornado, unfortunately, is an extremely real possibility for today. Uh, as model runs have really increased in that confidence of discrete supercells firing, that's why I think we could see that moderate risk over central Oklahoma. Then as we go through 9 p.m., that continues east-northeast to the OKC metro, approaching the Tulsa metro area, 10 p.m. eastern, 11 p.m. eastern, and then by midnight eastern time, we start to see those discrete supercells tamper off, and we don't see much of a tornado threat with them after the 11 p.m. midnight time frame tonight. Then that's when we start seeing our damaging wind bag increase out here across Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri. That should be able to produce winds as high as 80, maybe even pushing 85 miles per hour. And then we do have to go to a slightly old model run to progress further out than that. But you'll see that line continues going into about 3, 4 a.m. here, progressing even further. This is about 6 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Eastern. Still some thunderstorms ongoing there in Missouri. And I do think the HRRR is over-convecting a bit with this risk for severe weather out here in the southern U.S. So if we go ahead and pull this out all the way until uh, Wednesday. Actually, we'll go ahead and just do a bit of a broader risk area there. So there you go. That's a lot better. So if we pull this out to Wednesday afternoon, it has a lot of convection all over the western open warm sector here, right along that cold front from about southeastern Wisconsin all the way down to about northeastern Texas there at 2 p.m. Eastern for tomorrow. I do believe this is over convecting. I think the HRRR is going to slowly get rid of some of this convection and not show it being as sloppy of a, of a threat for severe weather. And the HRRR really shows uh, the lowest end scenario for tomorrow. I mean, it really doesn't show uh, nearly as potent of a threat as what some of our other model runs have shown. And it really only shows a big time wind bag starting to form uh, tomorrow night around the 9, give or take, 9 p.m. Eastern time frame is when that main severe threat kicks off according to the HRRR. Uh, but I feel like that's going to be wrong. I feel like we're going to see this change a lot over the next couple uh, the next couple hours here as we get some better model data in, especially at the 0ZH RRR tonight. And again, if we are going to see a moderate risk or greater, uh, it's going to have to be because of prefrontal confidence in front of that cold front or maybe even along that cold front. We'll see if we see any discrete cells fire along that cold front. And the HRRR just isn't confident uh, in that by any means. I mean, it still has a very notable tornado threat. Uh, we'll look at updraft to list tracks here and I mean you can see it definitely has a tornado threat wind threat small hail threat all across the southern midwest into the Tennessee and uh, northern Dixie Alley areas here uh, so definitely still a tornado threat, but not as notable as what some other model runs that show for tomorrow so we'll see how things trend I don't think they'll pull that moderate trigger today uh, for the day two outlook that updates I think at 3 30 eastern I think we'll be live for that update I don't feel like they'll pull that just yet because there's not enough confidence in discrete supercells firing uh, in front of that cold front. So we'll just keep an eye on it, see which way things trend. But let me just show you the environment real quick for tomorrow. Uh, I mean, like I was saying, all we have to see is just a single, uh, just a single discrete prefrontal here. We could see uh, easily an intense, potentially long track tornado for tomorrow. Uh, definitely a very, very high end environment, very concerning environment there. Uh, really not much of an issue with the environment other than storm mode and storm mode is going to be the deciding factor for tomorrow's severe threat and then tonight uh, i mean tonight let me just show you this environment it is just it's just absurd i mean it's just crazy i don't know if we've seen an environment quite like this uh for the threat ever out in this area anywhere in the u.s i don't know if we've seen an environment quite this high end maybe except for like two days prior to march 15th um so march 13th looking at the h triple r for march 15th i think we did see an environment similar to this but that definitely was not centered over oklahoma i mean this environment is just really as volatile as it gets when it comes to severe storms uh, and thankfully the HRRR doesn't initiate on that cold front at this time. If we go all the way back to when it does initiate, the environment is a little bit, it's a little bit worse. It's still favorable for long tracked intense tornadoes being possible, but that absolutely volatile environment should stay capped. So this ridiculous environment, if we look at the HRRR here, uh, 
that's not a very strong capping, but hopefully it does hold. Hopefully it will hold there. Uh, I don't think that will be a huge issue towards, say, 3, 4 a.m. Eastern time on Wednesday. I think our primary threat is going to be closer towards that 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. or 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time frame uh, when those storms first form along the dry line here. So uh, we'll see. Uh, maybe we could see two rounds of supercells. Uh, if confidence increases at all in supercells firing along that cold front dry line. But right now, confidence is quite high in the potential for supercells firing along the dry line in and around the OKC metro area. And that is going to do it for today's video. I tried to keep it right around the 15 minute mark or so just to give you a quick update on the threat for severe weather. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button with the notification bell set to all so you know when I go live or upload a video. And uh, yeah, like I said, I'll be live later on today around 3, 3.30 Eastern. And then, of course, we'll be live through much of the afternoon, evening, and probably into some of the night hours for tomorrow. I don't know exactly when I'll start up the live stream tomorrow, but I imagine it's going to be probably around 1 p.m. for tomorrow, just a, a guess there. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay safe. Watch severe weather. Goodbye.